and uh, I like what I've been getting. So, I'm going to go ahead and break down your base plate and then your auto checks. If you have questions, you feel, feel free to put them in the comments section. All right, so there's going to be a lot of situations where you're probably going to sub people out. Okay. Uh, from what I've been getting, your best option is probably just kind of leave the tight end where he is for now. You don't necessarily have to run in three tight ends unless you just want a audible check down to, you know, if you're playing someone that's playing heavier sets in the box, you know, then you can run it with three tight ends. But you should be fine uh, running it however. We're just going to kind of go through the checks and the motions and everything you're going to do. Uh, one of the, the off plays that you're going to be running is this drive wide corner. Okay, um, y'all know Madden like I know. Stock plays are not necessarily going to be the best option. You're obviously going to have to make hot routes for them to work, but those unique routes are on the field for you to kind of, you know, kind of scheme around. So, you know, doesn't necessarily mean hey run it stock because what's going to happen is you know you'll have two routes going in the same vicinity of the field and usually we're like if they're playing match coverage or something like that you know the zones will kind of just navigate directly to the projection of the ball and you don't want that okay so i'm going to kind of go over the, the the scheme set that we're going to do right here and then i'll go over any motions that kind of transpose into the next phase of what we're doing okay um, one of the first things that I do want to go ahead and do is we're going to take this drag route and just make it a hitch route. So we do have a zone beater on that left side of the field, um, depending on how they react between, you know, the running back. Because of his alignment, you know, you can really take advantage of some defenses because the guy in man coverage on the, the running back might be on the right side of the field and he's cutting to the left. You know, usually you might have a quick pass option there. Um, like I said, if it's zone, you can kind of just sit there and wait on Jackson. If their user is sitting on that hitch route, then you should be able to hit that dig across the middle of the field. Okay. Uh, other than that, the second read that I want to go to is going to be what we're going to do with the tight end on the fade and go. What I want you guys to do is put him on a check release route. Okay, so we still have that flat route on that side of the field in case they're blitzing or anything like that. Something that's quick and easy that I can check to and it's going to be open, it's going to be guaranteed. You know, something easy. If you don't see something that you like downfield, you can definitely check down to it. So your play is pretty much going to be like that. You're going to read short to deep, okay? Uh, you can make the read you know, two read on one side or three read on the other, it doesn't matter. Um, we're not going to go through a full five receiver read here. Okay, so whichever side of the field you want to go ahead and take advantage of, just read that side of the field, you should be fine. Okay, so we'll start with the left side of the field. Now I'll kind of read off the hitch route. Okay, hitch is going to tell me it's going to be wide open, just like spacing concepts that I like to run. Okay, I'm going to run it a few times versus random coverages. Make sure he's in a block with me, so he's in the zone. He goes there, see how he takes the hitch route and then you have the dig. Get a nice little receiver with good catching traffic. Probably next year I might use like Devontae Adams or something for that, but pretty much what, the, what your play is gonna look like, it's gonna read the hitch. And then if not, you're gonna be able to go to the other side of the field if it's a man coverage. Okay. Um, other than that, it, I mean, it's going to work against a lot of base plays, um, and it's pretty schematic. You, know, you can definitely work off of this. You see man coverage, you already know where you're going to go with the ball. Okay. You're going to get that corner post to the other side. If it's zone, you can just sit there and check down to the left side. All right. So now, 
we want to scheme off this, there's other things we can do, okay? Um, let's say, for instance, I want to run, I want to run an in route, I want to run a hitch, or you know what? I keep him in that block release, I keep the hitch route, and then what I can do now is we're going to go into the next phase of the offense or so the next play that I'm going to break down for you guys, okay? So we're going to utilize the motion here. So what I'm going to do is I'm still reading flat, the flat to the, uh, to the hitch. So you're just going to motion him over and hike it before he gets outside the numbers. So you read the hitch and then you read the check down, okay? It's pretty much what you're going to be looking at in that, in that thing. It's going to be making sure you're taking advantage of any zone coverage. So if you're playing with people that run a lot of match coverages, you can kind of just flood one side of the field real quick and you know with a quick hike. They play down, you get them over the top. Make sure you utilize my user catch tutorial that I gave you guys. Make sure you get your click on. Do not hit R1 too early. If you hit R1 too early, you will get AI control and it will mess up your ability to make to make the play on the ball. Uh, let's kind of go ahead and get into the next play that we want to kind of motion get that motion off of. Um, the next play that I'm going to use that's actually going to capitalize off that motion is going to be one of your audible checks, which is the smash play. It's basically the same concept. It's flipped, but there's it's more of a zone beater than man beater. Because sometimes you try to throw it against man, you know, bullet passes don't necessarily have the best ball trajectory. Uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to still utilize that motion height. Now what I will tell you guys, don't let this route by this tight end get you, okay? You throw it too fast, let's say, you know, you throw it before he, he makes his read, whether he wants to stop or go, what's going to happen is your quarterback's going to throw it directly to the zone sitting in the middle of the field. So be careful with that if you choose to, to use it. Um, it's not going to be your priority read. You read it as your priority and try to quick pass it, you're going to throw an interception. Okay, so don't prioritize that. Unless you just want to throw a drag, you need to hop out him to a drag because sometimes, like I said, that's an option drag and sometimes it doesn't necessarily get where you want it to get. Okay, um, but like I said, um, what, what I want to utilize is this motion height with this route instead of a hitch it's going to be open underneath usually sometimes you know right as well is going to screw on you but usually you can catch people especially if they're trying to use her underneath they're not going to be expecting you to kind of just hit them with a little quick pass like that you can get behind them you know it's it's, it's hard to defend they can't press it if you motion hike it so you don't have any issues with it trying to find a nice little soft spot in the coverage. Now, if they're playing man coverage, okay, like if they're playing like a, a cover one or something, and if you just run it as is, usually that check release route will be wide open, okay. Um, he'll, he'll force the guy that's in man coverage because of his alignment behind the center and quarterback. Usually the guy in man coverage on him might be on the other side of the field. It might be the left middle linebacker instead of the right middle linebacker. And what that's going to do is it's going to force the guy that's in man coverage on him to play spy because of the check. Okay? He plays spy, then no one's playing man coverage on him. So when he checks and releases, he's going to be wide open to the flat. It's just something that you guys need to pay attention to. Um, other than that, uh, you're pretty much just going to be reading the um, – the little corner route over there that's really going to be your your main go-to uh sometimes you might find your situations where people will try to flood your gaps um and they will try to bring pressure um usually what i'll do in situations like that is i will max protect and then i will run a slant underneath and then i might do a check release route over there okay so if if i'm thinking they're trying to bring pressure, I can definitely just hit them with that and try to get like an inside off the check release or something like that. Um, 
it's not nothing too big, you know, it's just something to take advantage of what your opponents are doing. Uh, also, like I said, with that route with Jackson, it can get open underneath, you can read it. If you choose to throw the post route, make sure that this stick is all the way to the sideline. Do not try to pass me it up. Do not hold a bullet pass. If you try to bullet pass that, I guarantee you the ball trajectory will be bad aligned and it will probably be intercepted. So just kind of be mindful of that if you choose to throw the corner out. Make sure it's all the way to the sideline and that you do not throw a bullet pass. It can help, okay? Um, other than that, that's gonna be your second play that you're just gonna kind of check to. Um, and let's get into the next one. All right, so now we got two solid passes. Let's say you're playing someone that's, you know, just playing straight, straight up drop zone. Okay, we're gonna go into stick. Okay, it's gonna be our base covers, the people that run drop zones. And a good example is, you know, people that like to sit in uh, cover four drop or something like that. I know the Chiefs don't have a cover four drop right here. They might have one. In there, okay. So if you're dealing with cover four drop, it's the same thing. It's facing. Okay, you're going to get underneath, and you're going to pick on a defender that's going to have to choose between defending two receivers. Okay, so it's pretty simple. You just find which one opens. You just make your read off of it. So right there, we're going to run it back. Now, if they're playing three, four, five, you know, you'll probably read one of the uh, one of the hitch option routes, but if they're playing like 3 3 five, you're just going to read it right up the middle to the running back. Okay, so it's a solid little spacing concept underneath. It's going to basically take those people that try to play quarter shells over the top, and it's going to kind of neutralize the aspect of them doing this. So you can just kind of keep picking on it. Um, if you're dealing with people that have D-line users or anything, you want to make sure that you double team them. Okay. You don't want that guy getting in the backfield, especially if you're doing a check release route. You just want to make sure that you get it. So any of those routes will be open, cover three, cover two. You just got to make sure you make the right read. I'm not going to necessarily tell you who it is because users kind of change who's going to be open. You know, sometimes you might be dealing with a good user that, that, that's very good at baiting. So do be, be mindful of that. Um, Another thing that you could do is you could go check releases with the tight end to kind of help you with blocking, so to help with you getting double teams off. And then you can still get that running back over there or whatever, but you know, it's just really option, or it really depends on how your opponent's trying to attack you or anything like that. Just make sure you utilize your slide protects and everything, and you should be okay. So that's going to go over the stick concept that you're going to be able to use. Uh, see what else we can go ahead and get covered for you guys. I think for the most part that is what I use. I think the last one that I use is the clown post. And then I might try to do something with a four vertical stick. So let's go back into it. Go random plays. Uh, like I said, I like to not have routes go to the same spot on the field because you don't want two receivers hitting the same spot because when they reroute, they're gonna run the same exact route to get open and it's gonna be easier for defenders to cover it. Okay, so you don't wanna do that. So like I said, we're gonna keep the scheme with the check release with the tight end over here. You can opt to do the same thing with the tight end or something like that. So you'll have those two. And then the last thing that we wanna do, you can have the over under crosser or you can opt to kind of, if they're playing a lot of press coverages, usually what I'll do with that crosser route is I'll put it in a fade route. And the way that those routes construe with each other, if they try to play press coverage, what happens is they'll usually, if this AI, they will get called for defensive holding. Okay, so it will be benefit. You know, you're not gonna get it every time, but it's definitely nice to have in your arsenal, especially with aggressive users when you're running routes like that. So we're just gonna go ahead and run it. The blocks, and the check release gets wide open downfield. It's really why I, why I like it, you know, it's just kind of make sure that you have guys that can block, but at the same time, 
you know, being able to get out of the backfield is, is crucial. So we'll run it with the crosser this time. Crosser. It takes too long to get open. I'd have to run a rollout if I did the crosser versus that coverage. So we'll try it again. So if I'm going to do it that way, see they don't want me to roll out. So see, you just take the check down if they're playing back too far. That's why I like those little check release routes. You know? Something that opponents will have to probably shade underneath to defend, and when they shade underneath, usually if people play global assignments, it's going to shade all of their coverages underneath, and you'll be able to hit those crossing routes and those post routes and stuff like that. So it's just something that you guys should be able to key in on, and it should be very useful for you guys. But if you can get that rollout, you know, it's fine, but I don't think practice mode is going to let just something that you guys can kind of plug and play into your offense but usually like I said the way I run this I, I really read that route that clown post route off of the uh, the deep fade sometimes the deep fade will get open you, you'll definitely take it okay sometimes I always preach user safeties will freeze especially when you run route concepts right back they'll usually try to bait underneath and when you have routes like that they'll try to play underneath you know, thinking that you're running a slant or something or a dig route with the other plays that we've already went over and they'll play underneath and you should be able to just float it over the top. Um, it's just something that you guys could consider. And like I said, I like that route by, by um, Jackson, but I don't think practice mode is going to give you the same results that you would get in a game. Okay. Um, you just make a very solid notation of that. You're not going to get the same results of this route in practice mode that you're going to get in a game. In a game, it's going to be a lot more fluid and it's going to get open a lot faster. In practice mode, it's not going to work. Okay, I don't know why it's like that. Maybe it's left hash, right hash uh, principles in practice mode. I'm not sure. But trust me when I say it in a game, it's going to be pretty solid. And like I said, the benefit of being able to get defensive holding in the process is going to help, especially in clutch situations where you're dealing with people that like to play too tight in coverage, okay? Um, I went over the runs. Um, if you do run in this formation, I will strongly suggest that you utilize the impact blocking, um, whether you're running the zone weak or the dive or the stretch, either or. Uh, and just make sure that you find the guy on the back side of where you're running and then just click your right stick up. Now you won't see it in practice mode, but when you're in a game, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a helmet icon under that line, okay? Um, sometimes when you do do this, the play will flip and it's fine, you know? If you're a right-hand quarterback, you're running like inside zone or zone weak, it's fine because it's, you can always just kick the run back to the other side. With, with no problem. Now stretch run is going to be able, you're not going to be able to do that. But for the with the zone weak and the dive, you should be okay. <laughs> but it, but that's fine, you know. So you just put that on there, and you get that impact block, and you're just going to be able to run for daylight. Especially with the past plays that we've already went over, you're going to catch your opponent running a lot of pass commits. Okay, but you put that impact block on and he's going to go down the field. You're going to be able to get solid yards with the dive. And let's go ahead and run the zone weak so that you guys know. The zone weak is going to be a little bit low, slower in the animation. We kind of dive is usually quick. The zone weak, let me show you. You want to find the guy that you can double to. So usually it will be like the center. And then sometimes, like I said, the play will flip. When you try to impact block, it's fine. If you're a right-hand quarterback, that's perfectly fine. You don't want to hand it off though. That way you can kind of protect better on the, uh, the run block on the other side. Alright, so you got the impact block. Solid yards. Okay. Run it one more time. Find the guy in the gap that we want to run. Gets the impact block and look how look how aggressive he is. He doesn't he doesn't allow sheds very easily, even with us holding the turbo. Okay. So that's just one of the advantages of running impact block. It allows you to turbo without giving up block sheds. Okay, now it's only going to work on the guy that you know you're 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 doing it to. You're not going to be able to do it to the entire line, but 
you find that gap, look, 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 how, look how aggressive they are on blocking it. Okay? So that's going to be your, your two runs, whether you're doing dive or zone weak. Just kind of scheme those in, you know. Like I said, you're going to be passing a lot out of this formation, so definitely you're going to get, you're going to be able to use that pass to open the runs up. You know, be honest with it, you know, that I don't spam runs, you know, unless they're just fully committed to trying to stop the pass. So let's go over the next play. And really the scheme here, a lot of the passing that I do is going to be off that check release by the tight end on the other side, okay? So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and run that check release over there. And if it's covered, you know, usually that crossing route is going to be our go-to look. Um, if it is not covered, usually you just want to just go ahead and dink it off. Now, there's a couple of things that I do do here that similar, become similar to how we're running our offense, okay? Remember, the very first play I was showing you, what did, what did we do with Jackson? Ran that hitch route, okay? Uh, this is going to be advantages because, you know, there are situations where they're playing match coverages. Usually hitches with anything crossing over or underneath can kind of space out those zones. You know, they're going to have to pick or choose and you're going to catch them isolated. Okay, if they're playing any deep blue zones, they're not going to be in the equation of defending those routes. So usually you might, you might catch a vert hook or, you know, a seam flat or a quarter flat or something like that. But you're going to pick them apart because they're going to have to play hitch to flat. Okay, and that, that hitch route's going to get wide open. It's easy check read. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. Read off square. If he isn't there, they play man coverage. You can come off the backside with the, uh, the double move dig. Okay, so just bear with me. Set it up again. Pretty simple. It's covered. You want to play man coverage, you can just go over the top with the backside dig. Pretty simple. Nothing, nothing too complex, just easy reads. Let's do it again. Give me the hitch route. Read the hitch. Let's go to the hitch. Easy, quick completions, and they're going to have to be, you know, able to defend those. They're not going to be able to sit there and play over the top coverage the whole time. Okay? So you give you get a solid run in there, whether you want to run dive or zone weak, and you can definitely take your play action and, and kind of work it in and get some magic with it. Okay. Um, also, if you know, like like we were doing with the clown post, you can still run that deep fade and you can still run that check release. Okay, so don't be like, oh, I must only do one thing. Because if you only do one thing, eventually people are going to catch on to what you're doing. So kind of, kind of scheme all your plays to where they're very similar, that you can do similar things out of each one, you know, but make it confusing to defend, you know. So now we have that deep play, and now we can go underneath on the crosser and we took the safety off. So it's just certain things that you'll be able to do, you know, and just kind of make your reads based off of what you see. Um, other than that, like we could also possibly run the hitch and you can run a deep fake over there. You know, you can read, still read the hitch to flat. You can probably playmaker that. And it's not going to let me, but, you know, private smoke does weird shit in the pass rush, and I think we all know that. <laughs> but um, other than that, let's go ahead and get into the other plays. One y'all probably already know if you watch my streams enough, is the slip screen. Okay, I use this and it will destroy everything except man blitz, okay? <laughs> I'll get into that, man. Uh, pretty much in here, if you're running this screen, there's one thing that you cannot do. And that cannot do is do not run outside the numbers. Unless maybe, if you're Aaron Rodgers, maybe because you have roaming dead eye. But other than that, if you get outside those numbers, you're going to create block shits. And you don't want that. Okay? Because you're only going to have like two or three guys blocking for you. Um, usually what I'm doing is I'm reading that crossing route and seeing if they're trying to defend it. Now, if I don't have pressure on me and I feel like... They're probably playing like a cloud flat or something like that, or they might be playing a cover three or something. 
what I might end up doing is I just I'll playmaker the crossing route, okay? Playmaker it up, you know, wherever I feel like it's going to get over. Um, other than that, you know, do not roll all the way out outside the box. See, see where Moreau is right now. That's usually about how far you're you're going to be rolling out. Maybe a little bit further, but do not want to get close to those numbers because, like I said, you will create block sheds. And you know how this game is with your quarterbacks not having fast releases. You know, you might get a throw out a sack or a strip sack fumble, and you don't want to put yourself in those situations, okay? Um, so we're just going to run it. And like I said, just want to stop right there. Try to get it out as fast as possible because, like I said, this pass rush in practice mode is a little jubilant. And if you see man blitz, sometimes you can get away from it, and then you can just go downfield, okay? Now they're going to do cheesy shit like that in practice mode, but y'all see the results in practice mode. I mean, in game all the time. I literally destroy. Don't don't go out further than you can. If not, you can just kind of play with it and check it down to the running back. Solid check down too, because like if they're playing drop zones, no one's defending the running back. So a nice little check. Sometimes you roll around and then just throw it over there. You know, sometimes you might get five yards, sometimes you might take it to the house, sometimes you might get 20 yards, you know. It varies, uh, really, just like I said, if they're playing man coverage, you're, you're going to have to work some magic. You might roll out right and then roll back left and then throw it on the run. Like, you might do some crazy shit, okay? So, just kind of improvise a little bit, you know, based off what you see. But I would not run this against man coverage, and I would try not to run it outside the numbers like I did right there um, because like I said you create block yet so if you see man coverage try not to run this as much especially man blitz because you're not gonna have time okay um, if they're having like soft soft rushes like that you can definitely just tear them up downfield and they're not gonna let me do that in practice mode apparently but y'all see the results in the game it's just something that you're going to have, and this will be one of your audibles that you need to check to. Don't call it as your base play. Okay? The other plays that we went over will be more or less your base plays that you, you'll be able to scheme off of. Um, other than that, I mean, I think that pretty much covers everything in this wing flex close. Um, we could go over four verticals real quick. And like I said, uh, everything that I do in here is going to be based pretty much the same, more or less, right? So I might not want to go deep. I might go with the hitch, the flat, and then I'm going to smart route that. You know, that's one way that I would run this because I don't want all my routes going to the same spots on the field. Okay, if you got multiple routes going to the same spot, spot on the field, you're not going to be able to attack your opponent vertically because you got two routes. They're going to be pulling three or four zones down the field with them, and you're not going to be able to get, you know, a solid one-on-one -on -one that you need for my user catch tutorial to work for you, okay? You're not going to just sit there and moss three defenders. I'm sorry. I mean, they might do it every now and then with, 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 with those generational receivers in real life, but, you know, you got to understand that video game logic still applies. So if you're running verticals, don't send everybody deep. You know, send one or two deep routes, so you can split the safeties and then just attack them underneath. Make, so make those short zones play down low so that you can make your reads downfield, okay? So this is one way that I would run it. Like I said, I keep that uh, check release route by Moreau. We go ahead and smart route the deep fade by Waller. And then we have our hitch with our route that crosses underneath. And then we attack downfield. So that route right there is going to take the corner and possibly the safety out of the play. And then what we're going to have is this hitch and this crosser going to take these linebackers left and middle. Should take them out of the play. And that should be good. I mean, I'm just going to read short routes first. Just take your little short route reads. Hitch, smart route, check release. And then look at our running back gets open to the flat. Uh, might have to utilize, like if you're gonna run this, you might. Let me do it like this. Let me run the hitch, 
smart route fed and then use Waller's route and then do the check release over there. So if I'm dealing with cover two and I want to go down the middle and, and attack the safeties, you know, I can do it like that. Now, if they're not in cover two, then, you know, obviously they make your check downs, but you smart route that, hitch, use his route, and check release, okay? kind of just dink and dunk all the way down the field if you have to. Um, if you catch them, you know, slip in with their safeties and trying to play those routes underneath, then you might be able to, like I said, get those one-on-ones that you really just want to kind of exploit down the field. Um, other than that, I'm trying to see if there's like any other routes that I would use. Like I, I, you could probably do like a check release route over here and then attack like that and then split them off like that, you know, and then just read the check release. You got a nice little inside pass lead, you can attack it like that. And really just remember, like I said, is you want to make sure that none of your routes are like this. See, if, you, if you're running four verts and, and, and everything's going vertical, you're only going to have one check down. And, you know, let's say they're user in that check down, the AI is going to be covering everything downfield you're not going to have a clean throw, okay? So just remember that, that some of these plays are designed with a mind that you're supposed to hot run, okay? A lot of people don't realize that, and they just sit there and they try to run stock plays, and it doesn't work, and they wonder why. You know, that's pretty much just, just logic what y'all need to start considering when y'all run plays. Um, for instance, let's say... The right side of the field and the left side of the field, if you just want to break them down, those are fine. So like right now, you got Jones running deep down the middle, Jackson fade, like running the outpost fade, you know, that means that whatever you're doing on the right side of the field could be short. Or if you decided that you want to do, use the right side of the field to attack deep and then go underneath on the left side, you could do that. You just want to make sure, like I said, that none of your routes are going to the same spot on the field because they're going to be pulling those interior and short zone defenders down the field with them so other than that it's pretty much going to go over everything in this scheme um, i'm going to just go ahead and stream my game i'm not going to close the stream out or anything but i just wanted to make sure that you guys had an elaborate uh in-depth concept of what i'm thinking about when i'm running my wing flex close, okay guys? Um, other than that, it feels so much better in this new house. <laughs> and I'm able to process my thinking and give you all the information that you need. So, other than that, let's go on and get into the game. And let's try to utilize some of this stuff. Now, it might get to a situation where you might play a game and you might find yourself in a spammy situation because you might be playing a spam. Lord forbid, there's a lot of people that do not know how to play defense. You know, they might, they'll have pass rushers in coverage. I haven't seen everything. Like people don't know how to, you know, there's flaws in the game in that, you know, and it's not intended because, you know, technically you're, you're the person with the stick. You've got to make the adjustments, okay? They, they, they just give you the game to play. It's, it's up to you to format it and make it work, you know. Don't run anything stock. Don't, don't run the stock depth chart for those formations. Like I was trying to show you guys yesterday with like the 3-4 three the 3 four odds, you know. You don't want your pass rushers playing in coverage. You know, and you'd be surprised how many people do that. Like I'll play the Steelers and I'll see TJ Watt in coverage. You know, it's like a why, why would you negate, you know, the man has abilities for pass rush. Why would you negate that? You know, it's just something that, that people need to think about. Give me one second, let me get my drink. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback.
It takes me a little bit longer to get to the fridge, but I'm not going to be able to open this anytime soon. That's what dropped this. But we'll be all right. So, said don't, also when you're scheming, don't spam a mini scheme the whole entire thing. You've got to be able to be versatile. Okay, guys? Um, kind of read the coverages, see what you see. Oh, I had that. Oh, we have that. Don't give up. They go block someone. Good play. I slightly had a um a, 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 a play that I wanted downfield. All right, so we see a buzz. Let's see how it works. Do it like this. So remember, everything that you're doing is with the with the mindset of a runner. So we can run it like this. Okay? I know I didn't go over this in practice mode tutorial, but you know, it's just kind of showing you guys what you can do. I hate that he throws it like that, and I hate that that happens, but. You know, <laughs> it's mad and it's fine. We're going to go ahead and score a little. I guess I wish I could get a mulligan back on that. But, <laughs> so, like I said, there's members of video games. There are flaws in it, and that's one of them. by the guy you thought it was going to be. How about the defender turning into an offensive player as the ball hits his hands? And off he goes, off to the races, and into the end zone. Ball never tends to want to touch the ground on incompletions. We'll be Justin Tucker for the extra point. Never, never let bad plays just get the best plays. You know, used to, I, I used to get infuriated, but I, I understand as a game and today's generation. <laughs> they don't make games like they used to, you know. Back then, you, you came out with a Madden game, no patches, straight from the shelf. Everything played the way you know the way it was supposed to play, I guess. You know, now now everything they, they try to release a game and they want to patch it up and change it. You know, it happens. There's nothing you can do about that. Obviously, like I said, my biggest pet peeve on this game is that they don't fix what they're supposed to fix. A nice run on first down gets him six yards to the 31. They don't fix things, or they fix it too. They try to fix it too much. Band aids, such and such, so forth, so forth. That's so all you're going to be reading. Pay attention to the plays, guys. I know where everything in the start of the stream. So just kind of pay attention to what you see. Might make checks. See what wide open. That check release route. People be sleep on them routes. You know, like they don't pay attention. But when they come out and they play man coverage, those check police routes are wide fucking open, just like that. Because usually the guy that's on them sees they're blocking and they decide to blitz. It's just one of those ways to get your opponent out of doing what they want to do. Many plays in this team, bro. Like you don't necessarily need just one or two plays. The more you use, the better off you're going to be. You can take off with him if he wants to play over the top coverage. Inside the ten to the nine before he's out of bounds. They'll wind up getting 
Like I said, remember, don't mini scheme yourself to death. It's always open your playbook up, you know, have situational plays that you want to use that, that work. You know, like I like my I form. I can do a lot out of my I form. Plays that I like to call in the red zone. Should we ID the user? Jet sweep, car bats it forward. And they'll get this one back to the five yard line, but no further. Get those easy quick completions. Also, man, utilizing your manual subs. You know, make sure a lot of people don't do that in regs as much as they should. Utilize them. You know, be situational sometimes. The way you might set up your, uh, you know, your auto sub sliders, and it may not be enough sometimes. Sometimes you'll have to utilize your manual subs. That was corny. We'll be all right. If it gets to a situation, I might just go ahead and take my three. From the gun, it's Carr. Eluding the pressure right. Right side caught by Jackson. Or maybe not. Trying to see what my options are. I could, I could definitely wheel them off. They'll go for it. It's Car. Escaping. Back to the end zone. Good play. Four rounds to one side, man. Beats any stock zone. Like being an offensive. The defense has been getting better. You know, first and foremost, pretty much always been an offensive guy. So we know we got man coverage. There's power running right through this. Shit. I wish I could have that first drive back. BS interception. So we can't cry over spilled milk, man. We keep moving forward, we're gonna be okay. That's why they worry too much about it. And a short kick taken at about the 16. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard line. Now what I might opt to do here, I don't think Littleton's gonna be fast enough. For us. Someone in coverage. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and ten at their own 28 yard line. The drive will commence with a run by JK Dobbins. And give him See how he is attacks first. And then we'll go. Play action. It's Jackson. Hobbs. I wish Hobbs was a little bit faster. So he had like 95 speed. If I had a 95 speed corner that had some of the physical tangibles that Hobbs has, I'd be happy. That way I won't get beat on the weight stuff like that, even though, you know, Hollywood is faster. But he, he doesn't have the size where he should be breaking off press coverage here. But we'll be all right. We'll make an adjustment on the next time, the next drive. We'll make sure that that's dependent and accounted for. And it's up and good to make this now a 14 
What's up, go? You know, you just joined in, man. Uh, rewind the stream to the beginning. I went over the full scheme, so that you can kind of get the breakdown for it. I will be utilizing it in the game as needed. I'm not going to spam too much of it. Because uh, in the end, I want my stuff to work. You know, if you sit there and you spam one formation the whole game, eventually people, you know, some cases, not all, eventually people you know, schematically, you know, adjust it. Get him with the impact lock right there to take him out of the play. Impact lock does work against ability based players, so just make sure that you take note of that. They have an ability, and you, you want to run right at them, which is advised. Go ahead and do that. Because if you don't run at them, their ability kind of triggers off anyway. So just kind of make notations of that. We're going to hit him with his cover three beater. Make sure we. Get over there, reposition our quarterback to that side of the field so that we can throw a perfect ball trajectory. Okay. Nice little cover three beater. You don't want to stand there initially from the hash mark and throw that because if you throw it from the hash mark and throw it, sometimes you'll throw a bad pass. It might sell to the right to the third. It might sell inside to the inside third or something like that. So you want to, like I said, just kind of walk like two or three steps to that side where you're going to throw it so that you have a more accurate pass. So now Carr, he'll lead the Raiders up to go for two. They'll try and run and he run committed. See, that's the thing about the run committed. A, it doesn't create blockchains. B, you have to guess which side it's running. It's not like a global thing like pass committee is. So you have to know where the run's going. And then it, it, it doesn't have, like, like the pass commit creates finesse move wins and power move wins in the, person, in the pass rush. Whereas the run committing doesn't create no blockchains at all. It's just blitzing everybody. It's like, it's like being on special teams and standing in a cage and engage 12 or something like that. You know, it's like, all right. Like, whose idea was this? <laughs> you know? So, don't do that. Good shit. He really just tried to RPO me. He's on that. Clog it up, clog it up, there we go. That's why I like playing around this, so you can clog up. Passing is on passing lanes. I want you to go for it, thank you. Trying to see where he wants to attack, and then I can decide which coverages I want to use to, to, to contest it. Coming up here at halftime, we'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first half highlights and analysis from a back and forth first half that we've seen. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that will fall incomplete. See, as long as he's rolling out and holding the turbo and doing all that, that's generating stamina loss. Main, the main thing that I'm trying to do right here is to get him tired as quickly as possible so that he's going to throw a bad pass or he might throw something short because stamina affects all that. So as long as he's taking contact with his quarterback, we're good. That's, that's, that's the big thing about how I play defense is I always want to get those quarterback hits and hurries as much as possible, even though sometimes I'm not even blitzing sometimes. You know, sometimes I'll just rush four, but I want to make sure that the four that I'm sending are getting after the quarterback. So that has him staring at a third and ten. To throw is Jackson. I want to make sure that everything's 
cover where I think someone might be trying to throw the ball. So sometimes I will play that that, that cover two scene and dying, even though it doesn't have cover two scene. I gotta make it a cover two scene by not sending the, the, the extra defenders. What's up, um, hot girl? I love my match coverage. I play it to perfection every time. You're not going to hit me with deep crossers. Everything's going to be defended. You're going to have brackets off underneath. Basically, how you should be playing defense. Nobody really considers all that. Like I said, our four man rush gets pressure. So he's not able to sit there and just make read four and read five. You know, you've got two reads. They're not there. Third read's an, a possible option. But usually they're not going to be able to make those reads before the pressure gets there. You can see we have the impact block. See how, see how he just got pushed back. Keeps them off. Those ability-based players, you know, keeps them off guard. You know, you might play people that have those inside stuff, abilities and stuff. It neutralizes them. You know, it take, takes it away from them. Makes them have to actually play front of that seat. He gets picked up, and we still get five yards. He does not get into the back. So if you're trying to run against players with abilities, definitely want to make sure that you are utilizing that impact blocking. Like I said, don't roll all the way out, wait for the shed, throw it. See, sometimes you do it. But we did get the easy completion, because that's fine. Kind of scheme off of it now. Loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. What I said. Car. Check release every time. For right side nice little route that they play. have to be accountable for. First down is the Especially if they're playing like any type of match coverage or anything. It's just something that you make sure you have in your arsenal. With 19 seconds to go and half number one. On first down. And then look. Oh, I wanted that so bad. I wanted that. Oh, go over there. Wide open. I had her out. I wanted that so bad, fellas. I'm sorry I didn't take it. It was over there, the one play touchdown, but it's a quick easy read up the seams. You know, anytime you play cover three, you're going to be able to attack the seams very easily. Um, what you can do right here, instead of going out, you can go down the seams. Nice little hitch. I'm going to throw it, bro. I'm not going to throw it. Thought I would be able to spike it. But you see single high safety. Remember, the seams are usually going to be a lot safer to hit instead of just going to the flat, unless you got a hitch flat combo or something like that. And then, then you can attack, attack it a little bit better. But you don't want to necessarily just have flats or anything going out to that side of the field versus cover three. Because cover three usually will defend those. So you just want to kind of make sure that you're on your P's and Q's as far as your play calling goes. And um, something, that, something that I do do in my 4-3, um, I do swap out my middle linebacker occasionally. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes oh, I am changing direction, bro. There we go. <sighs> There's like no good defensive players in this game that can change the I wish there was. Because I damn sure would have picked that up. I was like right there and I tried to go upfield. And it was just like a slow reaction by the AI and by the user. But it happens. I'm looking for a big thing in the game that works well. You know, you just gotta have faster reactions to the user next time. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. 
and I should have scored before half. And this will be a touchback. It's a field goal. I would have had it. Now, other things that you can do the Raider offense set to get this drive started. is when you're doing the touchdown a moment ago on the opening drive to half. I think the guys right now as they go out on offense, they're zeroing in on your scheme. Sometimes you want to have off offset plays that people you know have to worry about as well. I mean it's not gonna be like you know, oh shit, he's running this play type stuff. It's just stuff to get easy cheap yards, you know. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. Get the impact block, take him out of the way so we're able to keep moving the, moving the chains, moving the rock, moving the chains. We don't have to worry about abilities triggering him, highlighting, block shit in the back because it's an inside run. You don't have to worry about that with the impact block. Now, the only thing that you will have to be mindful of is that people, when they see you doing that and they catch on to it, they'll, they'll start run committing and stuff. So you just got to be careful that you don't fall into the trap. That's another thing about this game that I'm not too fond of is sometimes people get blind interceptions, which, you know, more, more so unrealistic. Like that right there, he wasn't even going for it. He was running around blind. And they just automatically handed him to get back. But whatever, right? And you can't fix everything. Only control yourself. And then take it to the next one. So we know he's going to be playing that route. Now we can use that route to our advantage. We'll keep that route. We'll even let him know we're keeping that route. But are you going to defend that, or are you going to defend something else that we're going to be going to? It's your choice. It's going to be like Brett Favre sometimes. You know? Sometimes you'll make mistakes. You'll throw a lot of interceptions. Making those mistakes. But in the end, you're going to be Hall of Fame legendary. <laughs> Mistakes make you better. Because you, you learn from them when you're supposed to get this drive started. A lot of people don't, some people do. So I know he's going to be on that. He's going to give me the dig route. Just like I said, it's price. If you're chasing that route, you're going to give me something else. Make up your mind when you want. He was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. On first and ten, here's Carr. Balloting the pressure right. Oh my god. Waller. As soon as I saw him break contain and get that's, my first thought that's, and my best pass. Gravitated downfield because nowadays most of these quarterbacks. When they do that, they want the big play downfield. They don't want to throw it short. In this case, he yep, took the he shot. Chasing routes. Well, he he six, he's going to have to defend. Him. If he doesn't defend it, it's going to be wide open. There's no stopping. You got to defend it, but. It was something else. So we do that, you're taking the user away from being down the field. Now we can plant his user on the spot on the field, and we don't have to worry about him. Plays man coverage. We're going to kill you. Supposed to be on trying to defend the backside dig route. First and goal, and they got to be like a crosser wide open. Goes with that run committing shit again. Touchdown, Raiders. Kenyon 
don't worry about the two, the, the two interceptions that I threw. You know, first went off of the, the double tip and then got kicked into the dunes. <laughs> Fucking hands are like, uh, is this going to be legal or? <laughs> I can make mistakes and still be in the game. You know, not, not necessarily sit there and worry and be like, oh shit, I don't need a mistake. We're human, you know? It's, it happens. You make mistakes. But are you going to be the type to learn from your mistakes or are you going to be the one that hangs under pressure? You know? At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And they're hoping to redo their efforts at the last drive when they got to the end zone. And just think of what it's like now. Yeah. The like those run fits cramp up those running lanes. See what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things. Take those cutbacks away. Get contact. Hit more fatigue becomes an issue. More fatigue becomes an issue. Y'all already know what I got downfield. I got some. I got some savings at the end. You keep running to fatigue players and then my savings. That ball, I guarantee, is gonna come loose. You can't play the deep and dunk game versus my defense. You gotta be aggressive. You gotta go downfield. You gotta know your shit. Because if not, I'll play that fatigue game with you. Now the Ravens gonna use one He's already time calling timeouts. It's just their first. The team's the starting to we take its toll. See, the best part is my defense is fresh. <laughs> A few manual subs that I did put in. We can get us a big play right here. Or that. That'll work. That's a big play. <laughs> However you take it, right? Shit, Mullins, I should have picked that. I should have picked that. That motherfucker bumped me. Good shit! I told you! I sat there and said it. I will play the fatigue game with you, and my safeties will knock that ball loose. I do not lie. I do not just be talking out the side of my neck. I let the results speak. I'm just insinuating that, hey, this is going to happen. You keep playing that dink and dunk game. My safety's hit. That's why I don't worry about the BS interceptions from earlier. the end of the game, bro, you got to go four quarters with me. That sucks because I might have to take a green there, but...
I was worried he might run back into the zone. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> don't. Don't do that. That would suck because he would have had a fucking pick six. Sometimes that would be the issue. Sometimes power works and it works real good. Sometimes your lead blocker gets in your fucking way and it goes real bad. Stop, 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 stop. Oh my. Really? Got it. Fuck the kid, right? Alright, so we'll. Collapse the pocket, man. Four man rush. And always make sure that that guy is aligned with the running back. You got to collapse the pocket. Four man rush. Defensive tackles begin after. Linebacker must be aligned with the running back. Good wall off. I'm not going to worry about it because I know that's going to generate fatigue. He's running with his quarterback. He keeps getting hit with him. We are fine. I know what's going to happen. You keep doing that. Same shit's going to happen from earlier. He's going to fumble. My safety's hit. You're not going to be able to run on me without generating that fatigue meter. Safety's hit, bro. I'm getting all that free contact on every play that you drop at. I'm making sure they're getting involved with the play. GG's. <laughs> my match coverage is like second to none, bro. Like, I know where my guys are supposed to be. I should only need to take the extra point here. We have the two possession lead with two minutes for me. And he's out of there, bro. I think he knows what time it was. <laughs> That's why I don't worry too much. And like, like I said, you'll have a few mistakes happen here or there when you're running my offense. Don't be like, don't don't let it get the best of you. Always stay poised and then try to capitalize it on the next drive. So I take my mistake and I learn from it. I'm like, okay, if he's gonna babysit this route, that means something over the top is gonna get open, you know? It's just stuff like that that you kind of pay attention to. Like, don't worry if you throw a quick BS interception, you know, trying to throw a hit route thinking that it's open, it might be open, but if someone's using it, you know, and they pick it off, don't feel fretted like you're not going to be able to utilize that. Keep that hitch on the field. If they're going to use it, it's going to be just like I did that last game. You're going to get that dig right over the top of wide open. Catch those users in bad positions, spacing them out further than what they can defend because changing direction is a big, huge part of this game this year, and probably will be moving forward. So I think this is the first year that a change of direction became like a thing, I guess. Keeps people from usering five or six routes of linebacker. <laughs> you know? Like I said, it's going to kind of stay with the realm of what works. Find find your inner Cheech and Chong. Make sure Donald's taken care of. Get a nice little push off on him. Because you don't want Aaron Donald in the back. <laughs> that's, that's a no-no. 
or he can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feel pretty good about your next couple of calls. Flush down right. They'll get this one complete to Zane Jones. And pass the 40. From what I said. Don't spam what you're skiing. Hey. You can always have something that you can come back to later. Hey. Guys, take note of that. Alright, so we had to throw out a sack. So that means Carr is going to be a little off on the back. So I want to make sure that we try to swap our quarterbacks around so that we're always fresh. A lot of people don't take note of that. It's like, you take a quarterback hit, fatigue sets in. And fatigue sets in. It affects your throw power, your accuracy, and all the stuff that the quarterback needs to be effective. So you've seen that last game that I played. You know, those, those quarterback hits would generate what I need them to. You know, force people to make bad throws in coverage. So we get that rollout. See, if you wait too long, that guy gets up. You wait too long. But you do want to run the play out because you're getting free pancake blocks on those defenses. Defensive line. That's why I like running screens because you have to generate fatigue. You know, while they generate fatigue on your quarterback by getting quarterback hits, you generate fatigue on defensive line by getting pancakes. So it's just an easy way to get pancakes is to run screen plays. See, look, you can't tackle. You can tell that it's working when you got a pair of Donald struggling to make tackle. I don't mind running stuff like that so that I can generate that team that I need. Play action also. The team defensive line as well. Quarterbacks. right now, but we'll be all right. Sets up second and goal. But down here near the goal line, you don't think of a cornerback in run coverage, but he made the stop. Yeah, most of the cornerbacks we know, they want to be those pass defenders and take away one half of the impact block so that you can not get a free shed. That's really what you use it for, man. You want to make sure that he doesn't get that. You get, look at that double look, that impact block just pushing him back. How you get a good power run game utilizing the impact block. Even against Aaron Donald, that, that right there is a testament to how effective it is. Especially if you know how to utilize it. But ultimately, the running game wears them down from the one yard line. That gets set up throughout the entire drive, doesn't it? And when you put the impact block, Aaron Donald doesn't get play. We can use that to fatigue him so he doesn't become a factor in this game. You know, doesn't have to be the flashiest play or anything like that. It just has to be enough to kind of be like, okay, you're not going to be able to use Aaron Donald to get block chips or something. You know, you're not going to have this guy just terrorize the back. You know, I just kind of make sure that you kind of contain a little bit of what people can do. And you should be okay. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. From the gun, here's Stafford. They'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. It kind of sucks a little bit that they don't show recent plays. You got to get out there and get those points back right now. That's a sharp throw there to get this drive on to a good start. Six nothing our score after one.
first and ten. Stafford escaping the pressure right. And he'll find his target. Woods, it's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup there. He was out there waving his arms. So you got a quarterback. Decide which linebacker I want to utilize. It certainly is because you got to get his attention because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space, Shit. and he found the right spot for the completion. Stafford on third down. Oh my God. Change the direction of this game. Oh. 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 That is less than I think. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to good pressure. Even if he has an elite defender on him, because he's regardless who the quarterback he is, whether it's Lamar, Kyle Murray, or pocket quarterback, Tom Brady, was the staff Generate pressure. To no avail. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Stafford now to throw. Get contact. The quarterback hits. All of those will play a factor as the game goes on. Remember what I said: when the team becomes an issue, it's going to start affecting more than just their stamina. It's going to affect their ability to throw the ball downfield. You know, all that fun shit. Okay, so definitely make sure that y'all kind of stay. So now Stafford and the Rams after the sack. And they're staring up at a third and long. Third and long. It's Stafford. That's out to the flat for Let's Akers. Keep everything out in front and make and them take the And at the 18-yard line. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Rocked the all his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a Try not to hit him. Like, sometimes I'll come out of the man. Do not run into him. Like, it's like, unless it's a nice knee situation, don't run into the kicker. Especially if you know you're going to get the lead even if they kick the field goal. Just let them take the field goal. If they're three, go back and off the knees. They don't take this. That right there is going to hurt me. So what I do, like I said, remember what I said about manual subs. Sometimes it's best to go ahead and utilize it so that you can get free plays off so that your guy can rebuild his stamina. He doesn't want to match personnel. See, if you don't impact blocking, you know, we just can get in the back trail the abilities and the trigger. So that was without, this is with. You put it on, he just takes himself out of the play. I know Andre James isn't the best center in this game. Sometimes he does just enough. Look at that. You got, you got a barely 70 overall center just locking up with AD. So that right there just shows you that small little tip. Can go a long way. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes. see what you see. Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. On second and nine, Carr flushed out right. Got a man. It's just not fair. <laughs> and he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. I should get banned from this game. <laughs> like, these people, like, what did you Doing, bro. Like, a nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yards. Get him with the impact block that I was just teaching you guys. He's not necessarily always doing it, it's not always going to work, but what it does do is it wears him down. You know, that's mainly what you want to do. You want to wear him down. Okay. Impact block locks him up, and prevents him from shedding. So third and two, and I count six defensive backs. Kind of make sure you do it. With, like he's in that three tag, I gotta put him over there with Richie Cognito, who's a better impact blocker. And he'll lock him up a lot better than the center. 
he's got a nice reason. He's, if he's in that one tech, or even that zero tech, the line with the center is a little bit harder to get that double team on him. Um, just make sure that you guys are utilizing that, okay? And have no help. I know I don't speak much on it, or I might not do it too often on stream, but it is a big part of so being able to, pull, you know, move the chains and keep everything that you're doing going forward. And see, as I said, the team sets in. You can tell his line is tired because he's not getting sheds when I'm not using the impact block. So as long as I said you're running the screens, you're utilizing the impact block, you're taking their best player on the line and facilitating it to where he's not going to get any ability based free block sheds or rush finesse moves or anything that's going to allow him to get in this backfield on touch. So just make sure that you kind of game plan around that when you're dealing with teams with superstar linemen. Um, you're not too much going to be able to do it versus like edge rushers. Um, usually if you're dealing with edge rushers, you're not going to be going to them anyway. But um, if you're dealing with like interior linemen, it's definitely going to be a big part of it. Your success, okay? Quick cut. Ah. I thought we were going to take the, the underneath. That's fine. Um, I could probably use a robber. Like, he comes out with that again. We could probably get him with a robber. Got him with a robber. See, I call my shit. Man. It's like sometimes, you know, I'm not going to stay in the man. But listen, if I feel like you're going to beat me with something and I see it, I'm going to change to it, and I'm going to call it out and say, hey, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to play that rock. And I played it for, to perfection right there. I like to call my shots, man. Like always, so that you guys can understand what I'm seeing a little bit. Go back to the screen. Even if we don't need the completion, you know, we're generating that. Really what you want to do is generate that fatigue on that defensive line. Not always going to be the flashiest stuff on the field. Get rid of the ball fast. Not going to worry too much. Sometimes you won't have great plays, but usually the plays that I'm just dialing up is just to generate the team on his defensive line. So that when it's in the fourth quarter, it'll be easier for me to move the chains, kill the clock. You know, I don't need to be spectacular. I got a two, two possession lead, you know, so don't try to be a superhero trying to score again before half and then end up throwing a big six and then, then you know, gave up your, your two point lead. Two possession lead, you know, one possession lead and you need his ball. And then you got to deal with that factor of, oh shit, here we go, it's another close game. Just navigate your possessions. That's all you got to do, folks. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And right out of the gate, they face what you think could mm -hmm. be a Sorry, so the ID me, we're not going to send him. And he's going to keep doing that, we're going to change. I'm going to stay in something. He's going to cost him. Try to do it. And what it's said. Look at that Robert. And we got help over the top. This robber will play over here. See how that robber takes that, that interior route away where he was trying to get that dig route. Usually, like I said, you can bait people in the play and, you know, think, okay, I'm just going to have this play the whole thing. No, you're not. Now a 
first down throw. Stafford. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, good hit. Down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Throwing again at Stafford. Nice cover. I'll take the dig. Escaping the pressure right. Oh, my God. I hate this shit like that. That shit's so stupid. Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Rams have got this back to a one score game. So the call's made by Sean McVay. They're going to go for two. It's a run with Akers, and he'll get in for the two points. So that will cut the deficit down to just a field goal. It yeah, happens. There's nothing you can do about that. I think we did okay defensively. I was going to that fucking scramble should have never happened. Should have been took away. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. That ultimately cannot get it's the not necessary yet, so from what I said about your your user subs, you gotta go to your formation so that you can get some plays off while you get some rest. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game. They know this is Some, you someone need. that can compliment, you know, because what you're trying to do. That could overrun your team. You get Make sure that you have, have whether it be speed or whatever, whatever really just gets your rocks off for it, you know. From the 27, Carr. Chase the route. Those hitch, that, that, that concept can be utilized in any pass formation. That hitch swing route will do, just demolish his own coverage. You know, if their user chases anything deep, just, you're, you're forcing their user to play the hitch. They don't want to play the hitch, you're gonna you're just gonna destroy them down there. You know, so pick or choose. Which one do you want to defend, right? Play the hitch, and I go down the field. So that's another thing, see how the swing route pulled down the seam flat, curl flat, play the flat, instead of play anything downfield. Just, that's why I like that, that underneath pass concept. And you can utilize it from any play, you know. It's not just, hey, you need to be in this formation and do this. You can know, put any, any formation right here to give you an example. You got the hitch, where you get hitch, he doesn't want to defend that. You throw it over the top of the ring. I used to watch baseball a long time ago when I was a kid. Back in the 90s when baseball was fun. Now it's like, eh, it's not, I don't know. Like I, got, I got to watch baseball back in the days of Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, King Ricky Jr. You know, all in those, those home run title where they were hitting like 70 home runs in a year and shit. You know. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know the Boston Red Sox are. So this guy is delegated to run play. So when they run to it. About everything that's going on. Here's Carr. Underneath. It's I love those little hitch, hitch routes, man. They're money. Solid underneath coverage beaters. I don't need to go for two there. There's no need for me to flex. You fuck around, you go for two, you miss. Then they get around, they go for two, they get it. And the next thing you know, you, you done got them back in the game. Usually, technically, what I want you guys to start doing is if you go for two, like if, you, if you're not going to score more than seven touchdowns, 
you know, 50 something points, only go for two, three times a game if you're confident that you're going to get them. maybe four. Really just depends on the scenarios, how they play out. But definitely no more than that is all you need. Just to make sure that the game is intense and competitive. And you don't have to sit in there and play those weird games. I find myself playing a lot of... Uh, Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time. It's the blitz. God damn. <laughs> You're not supposed to score that many points in baseball. Bro. <laughs> You let someone score that many points, bro. Your your pitchers, your coaches are getting fired. <laughs> your pitchers, they're they're getting traded. <laughs> they're gonna call call people up from Division One Double A. That was my guy. There we go. See, I like to sit on them dig routes, man. Usually most users don't. I'm looking for the dig route. That's that's the number one route that I worry about the most, and I'm always taking it away. You take them dig routes away, bro, I guarantee you one or two things. That's where a lot of my sacks come from, coverage sacks, because I'm taking dig routes away from people. So that's just something that, like, even when I'm playing match coverage, I'm looking for that dig route. I'm looking for something to get open deep down the middle of the field, right across when they're trying to roll out or something like that. Always looking for that. But, damn, bro. Yeah, Red Sox, man, they, they gonna have to call it a year. But again, guys, I appreciate y'all tuning in. It's getting late. I just wanted to kind of get that off my chest so that you guys know that hey i'm still trying to put content out here for you guys that you can look at and kind of pick my brain apart a little bit on some of these plays that i use in certain situations um other than that i hope i hope that this video helps you guys um and i hope that it helps your offense you know if you're interested in using some of these plays and some of these concepts that i've been using um definitely hope that that works for you guys um, other than that man appreciate y'all tuning in if you did join and we will see you guys tomorrow peace out and y'all please be safe okay